Welcome back, flower friends. And we're gonna do a secret cottage garden tour for August, August 1st, in fact. I think I missed July. I couldn't find my videos or what have you. I'm sure they're there somewhere, because I know I did one. But it is what it is. July has been absolutely crazy. Maybe for everybody, I don't know. But I am enjoying the summer so much June, we were, it was so cool. It wasn't until July that I actually got some summer weather. So I am relishing it though. <clears throat> I know a lot of people are hankering for fall. Uh, we were just in Lowe's today and they already had all the Halloween stuff up and I was like, come on, let me have my summer. <laughs> but so I'm gonna take you on. I thought I was gonna get this done in 10 minutes and it's closer to 20. So sorry about that if you don't want a long winded tour, but I just, there were so many things to show you and I enjoyed doing it. So come on along and let's go on a tour of the Secret Cottage Garden in August, on August 1st. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. So let's get touring. So let's do a rather quick, I'm trying to get this under 10 minutes, tour of the Secret Cottage Garden, the hummingbird's favorite little shower. I took a video the other day, I'll see if I can poke it in here for you to see. And we're here showering. Over here, my hydrangeas. The first two are um, Endless Summer. They're a raspberry color. They were a Lowe's Bargain Rack Rescue. I can see those two back there. Those are just regular grocery store hydrangeas I had picked up for a painting course I was taking and uh, they were my models um, but they're just your average like I said grocery store gallon pot hydrangeas one was purple when I bought it a beautiful beautiful purple so obviously had been treated the soil to make it purple but they're doing beautiful I don't do well with those type because of um, the ones in the back the light pink because we have late freezes and usually I don't get blooms because of that. So I'm gonna give those to my father-in-law who lives down in the valley and he um, can successfully grow them. This blue pot's gonna get moved. I had some stuff in it. It looks like bumblebees have been dropping dead in it. I don't know why. Last year, the impatience in this did so beautifully and I think it's because I planted them later in the season when the sun was lower in the sky. Uh, earlier I had said I was gonna move this in another video. Um, the quarter barrel to somewhere else because in the entrance here I am going to put my I think in urns or something beautiful pots the dwarf Alberta, Alberta spruces and then they will make a lovely entrance to the secret cottage garden make it just a little bit more I don't know like this is the gateway a visual appeal to me Okay, this is Darlo Enigma. Darlo's Enigma Climbing Rose. It's supposed to be a very um, vigorous rose, and I'm trying to decide where I want to plant it. I think I may plant it by the chicken pen and let it climb up that. It's supposed to be super, super vigorous, so I think that would make it prettier um, climbing over there. I just have to put an irrigation down there. My elephant thyme between my flagstones is starting to fill in. I've got a lot of weeds. I've been trying to keep it weed free. This is a test. I don't know if the work of flagstones is, I mean, planting between flagstones rather than just having gravel is worth it because the weeds really fill in and I have to really um, tackle it a lot to keep them beat back. I was hoping the elephant thyme would fill in enough that it would block out the weeds and it may if I, you know, if I keep at it, but it gets so hot here during a certain time of year that it kind of bakes it. You see how it's kind of died back there? That is from the hot sun. So another experiment, we'll see how it works. If not, I may just go ahead and fill in with gravel and sand and uh, keep it weed free. That way, look at my circle garden and my elephant ears are finally filling in. So note to self, if I want to do this next year, these elephant ears will be started indoors when it's where it's warmer and then they'll have it more of a head start and but my denim shades some of them are still closed up because the sun hasn't come over but the denim shades petunias i started from seed these are a wave petunia um they're doing gorgeous and then the white wave in there it's it's really filling in it's funny because i have them the white wave around this side too but they're not quite filling in as well as the denim shades 
and I spaced them the same amount apart so I could see that white wave really like more sun because this backside over here, it gets a little bit shaded more. So that's just something you take note of. Take note of different things in your garden. Oh, 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 look over here. This is the container that I swapped out. It's over by the other bench. I need to mulch it to hide the irrigation, but look, this is my Coco Loco roses in here. Look at that rose. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. The lobelia, some of it died off in the heat. Some of it stuck around. I'm not sure. I did seed some, I think Cosmos in the center because, oh, look, another bud. Another bud for a co these Coco Loco roses really struggled. I, I didn't get them in the ground and they were in the gallon pot under nine feet of snow. So they really took a beating, but they're coming back. I got them from Heirloom Roses. They're on their own route, which is a benefit for me. So this was a um, Sunshine Ligustrum. I've not been able to grow it. Uh, this one I dug up, put it in a pot because I could tell it was struggling um, and it's still not doing well. So that's just something that doesn't work for me. Here is a volunteer, Nicotiana. I love the colors on these. The backside is that dusky pink and the front is more of a creamy color. And there's actually two in here. And this one is more white. I, a li my lime one did not come back this year, but that's okay. I can, you know, I'll, I'll hunt down seeds. I loved the lime one. So I planted one of my seed grown coleuses back here. And um, it's doing great. I need to, I have more in pots still. I just had so many of them. I didn't know what to do with them. So, oh, look over here. This is, this rose, um, this is from Heirloom Roses 2. I can't remember exactly what this, Portlandia. The only thing I have with this one that bothers me is when the hot sun, direct sun hits it, it scorches and dries up and crinkles and doesn't look very good. So um, I need to find a place for it that doesn't do that to it. Or now that the sun has moving behind the trees more as the summer wanes into fall, excuse my shadow, um, it's doing okay. But we'll see if I keep that one. I may give it away to someone else who has better conditions for it. But the tequila surprise, this is from Star Roses and Plants or is it or weeks? Star, I think it's Star Roses and Plants. Anyways, that one's doing pretty. It fades out in the sun, but it doesn't uh, dry up and crinkle. But it seems to be a prolific, constant bloomer. So that's a win for it. This bed has been revamped this year. Now this um, coneflower, that thing is looking sad. I don't know if it has that aster's yellow um, or yellow aster, aster's yellow. I think it is. It's a a, not a pest, but some kind of problem with echinaceas. But usually it pops out these little things that look like other bloom heads, and it's not this. I don't know what's wrong with this. I may just pull it up. It's in a pot to protect it. I may pull it up and chuck it because it's not doing great. If it doesn't do great in my garden, it goes because I don't have that much room. So a volunteer, Black Eyed Susan back there. Um, my viburnum, this is blueberry muffin has the little berries on it. They will turn blue as fall approaches. It had pretty little white blooms. My hay rack is very sad. I just, I've tried and tried with it with different types of petunias and I, I fail, so I'm not good with that. So that may be another one of those things I just don't bother with anymore. So there's asters in here, they'll be blooming. Looks like I need to um, give them a little support. And I have the phlox in here, which will bloom soon. Oh, looks like I got a little piece of galaxy grass coming. See that? I love that. That comes up from seed. It has reseeded around my garden a bit. So over here, I decided to put one of my potted roses back there against the fence because um, it needed some color back here after other things faded. Oh, look. I got another, there's another um, Nicotiana volunteer, but look at my rose. That is David Austin Rose called Princess Alexandra of Kent. So it had put on a pretty bloom earlier. I see some aphids on it. I can squirt those off. And um, yeah, it's got pretty blooms to coming back on it. You can see back here, yesterday I went to a coffee shop and they were giving away the coffee grounds, of course, in big, big bags. I put it back there. There's nothing really growing back there um, that the excess nitrogen 
could harm, um, except I do have a cutting, not a cutting, but a, yeah, a root cutting of a lilac. I don't know if it's living or not. Anyways, it has been said that it deters gophers. So I was going to give it a try. Look at my, this is Lauren's great poppy. You can see it's very popular with the bees. Very, very popular. Now back here is where I had put my um, bobo hydrangeas. Look at this one, super struggling to get going. And then there's one right there beneath the crazy daisy and the poppy. It looks a little bit better than this first one. And then this one over here looks much better. So I don't know how those are gonna fare. I put them directly in the ground and didn't protect them from the gophers. So I don't know how that will work. But I know they didn't work for me in the front. Another Nicotiana, beautiful, beautiful. Back in there, I put a dahlia in a pot and it's coming through. Look at this. Let me back up here. My bench right here, look at this. The bench is a, what, the one I got from Home Depot that I shared the link to before. I'll try to remember. I think I do have the link in the description box below. So um, I love these benches. I have one out front. They're fairly comfortable. I will coat this one probably with a deck stain come this fall for it to overwinter. So it stays in great shape. But my purple rooster, Minarda, is kind of bending over. I need to get in here and support it. And the larkspur needs to be deadheaded. This is another Lauren's grape. These reseeded themselves from last year, which I do like that. But oh, what I want to say, here's a lupin. This one, I bought white. At least that's what was on the label. And here you go. But I don't mind. It's still beautiful. I need to thin out around it some of the plants that have come up. Um, it's kind of obscuring it. But And then if I support the purple rooster, it'll be more upright. And when I deadhead the larkspur, it'll be prettier. I'm still wanting to add the lattice that's right here and extend it around here so it provides the backdrop. But I can still get the breeze through it so it won't block off everything. So down here, my Orion geranium. And I had showed in a previous film how I cut back and supported the Phyllis. This is Phyllis hardy geranium, and it probably will start blooming again soon. I plopped some alyssum down in here. Um, it's getting established. It was just done a few days ago. So this is one of my Daisy May, great, not crazy Daisy, but Proven Winners Amazing Daisies. And I have two in the front that I really like. I did put it in a cage. You can see the cage there popping up from beneath. Um, to protect it from the gophers, just in case they were decided to nibble on it. They haven't bothered any of my other daisies, so I have high hopes. This is my Silene or Red Campion, bloomed so beautifully early in the season, and for me it is um, a good early season color, and later in the summer or through the summer after cutting back, it does provide a little bit more, but you see how it really gets scorched in the hot sun. So really for me, that's a spring bloomer and I just let everything else around it take the show during the hotter part of the year. Now look at this. This is um, Petite Pink Gara. This is when I got a proven winter selection. And I had one on the other side and I think the gophers ate it over summer, over winter. But I just loved it because it just, the bracts, everything just had such pretty color on them. And uh, so this one lived while the other one did not. But that's life in a mountain garden. I have a quick fire fab hydrangea back there, paniculata hydrangea, and um, it looks like it's hanging on. I was going to watch it closely to make sure. It seems the gophers tunnel along the fence line here. And so even if they don't chew on the roots, they do uh, create air pockets underneath that can um, stunt the plant. So. I have another hydrangea I'm going to put back here, but I have a huge pot I'm going to put it in. These are my Aglaea daisies. A friend gave me a division, and I have just loved these things. I have one here. I planted one over there. I divided it myself, and then I have one up front. That's a division. So my um, red Monarda is, obviously needs a little bit of support, and I'll do that later on. Look at this gorgeous rose doing its thing on this arbor. I do want to pull in some of these or trim them back so it puts more energy into just staying on the arbor. 
That's just personal preference. Though I have to say, having it spread over on the fence is kind of nice too. So in here is my little solar fountain. The birds all love. Colette Rose, she's reblooming again. And then the Volunteer Morning Glory. I, I pull a lot out because they reseed readily, but I leave some to go in certain strategic places to fill in. So this I had to really clean up down here. This is my moss heart. And the bees are loving the flowers on the, this is the um, scotch moss. And uh, I see a few weeds have popped back up in it. But I really had to trim it back. It was crawling all over and I wanted to keep it within the shape of that. Over here, my other Aglaia daisy. And look, I got a hummingbird moth over there just feasting on that. This is another volunteer, Nicotiana. And I just love these colors. They're muted, but just so interesting. There he is. My Echinops back there. I, I pulled this up or gathered some seeds from a house just two doors down, and it just has like a field of these. This um, delphinium did not get as tall. It usually gets like seven, eight feet tall. This year it didn't do that, but it's still pretty. It's a light pink, and it's, right now it's fading to a white. But down here, this is one of my last minute Dahlia buys at like Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the two. I hadn't, I had decided not to do dahlias this year because the gophers really eat them. And they always were so late blooming for me and I was gonna go with zinnias instead. And I just couldn't resist, so I bought some, and I'm glad I did, because this is really pretty here. Another one of my tequila surprise roses. Now, I plopped them around in their pots. I haven't put them in the ground, and I just put irrigation to them, because uh, I wasn't sure where I'm going to put them. I'm thinking the back hillside uh, will be make a great rose garden, too. It gets a lot of warm sun. So here's my tie-dye wave petunias that I started from seed. Aren't those interesting? Love them. They're getting started, getting going. Um, a lot of the things I started from seed, I kind of neglected towards the end of the spring, and they looked pretty sorry. It was my fault. It just, things got so crazy, and I didn't take good care of them. Look at my crocosmia back here. Isn't this beautiful? I love that. It just glows. I have these throughout. I have them in the um, Rose Alley, too, and they're blooming right now. I will have to do another video of their... I just posted one this morning of the beginning of July that tells you how far behind I am. This is August 1st. There's my Monarda, beautiful. It go, it spreads by runners underground. And I have to pull them up um, in the spring, a lot of them thin them out, but that's okay. It's not hard to do, not hard at all. So let's turn back this way to this portion. This is another red campion down here, Silene. I just pruned it back as well. And you can see it, it gets scorched when it's hot, but um, the sun is moving lower in the sky, so it doesn't, it, it will yeah, recover. This along here, forgive my hose, ugly as it is, I'm still oh, cleaning up back here. But I have a bunch of boxwoods that are gonna line this pathway and I think it'll be great evergreen and provide some interest when nothing else is going on like May when it's just starting to warm up a little bit or we can see the ground it, this garden is very very bare in fact if you want to go back and look at this I did a video in May and you can see how bare it is but um, I did a bunch of Asiatic lilies in pots so the gophers wouldn't eat them um, I love lilies. They do so great for me. Asiatic lilies many times will seed and spread, which I do love. Look, here's another one of my little inexpensive dahlias. It's coming into bloom. This is an ornamental grass, and I don't know which one it is. I had plopped some pots here last year, and I've forgotten. So I was going to wait and see what kind of plumes it had. Maybe it's a purple fountain grass. I don't know. But over here, let's walk along here. My David Austin rose, this one is, I'll put the name up right now, it's, it's escaping me. But this one, oh, Hyde Hall. This one was reputed to make a six foot hedge. And when I had it, I used to have it up against the back fence line. It did, it got very big. And that was before I had gophers. Um, but this, the roses always wanted to point towards the alley and not towards 
here. So I decided to put it, dig them up. I have some in front, some back here, this one back here. And um, that way I can see the roses. This is in a big, big pot. And I had thought to bury the pot in the ground. And I thought, no, I like it rising above. And if it got taller, I would. But it really took a beating in the snow. It really um, splayed the canes. And they're staying shorter this year. This is a volunteer daisy. It needs some support. You see it's flopping over. Or many times I just pick those daisies and um, put them in a vase. So this area right here, I had let the California poppies go. Just do their thing because you see they were, it was such a popular flower with the bumblebees. So I was letting them have their way here. And now that it's starting to go to seed, I'll pull them out. And I do have, you can see I have a Bill Wallace hardy geranium in there. Another one over here with the little tiny purple blooms. And this is a lesson for me for this year. See these zinnias? Normally, I just seed in place. I don't start them early. Well, this year that was a mistake because June stayed so cold that the ones I planted direct sown, they, they did not come up. And or if they did, they didn't make it. So these ones I did start early inside and then plopped them out here. And even though through June, they just kind of sat there. Once it warmed up, they really took off. So next year I will start early indoors and um i didn't even know these were lime i must have had extra seeds and that's why i decided to give it a try um but i had tons i wanted to do this year i wanted a whole hedge of zinnias and they just did not germinate so here is my firefighter rose this is a beautiful hybrid tea hybrid teas really don't work work for me usually because of my climate but this one has hung in there so it's in the pot in the ground and that's to protect it from the gophers but I get to enjoy the pretty blooms now this spot is kind of hard because it gets a lot of shade so um, yeah putting a rose here is not the best but I just wanted it here so here is my uh, Walker's Junior Nepeta and it took it a while to come into bloom but look how beautiful it's doing I really am enjoying this. So this is my ebb tide. It looks like it needs to be deadheaded. Ebb tide rose. And some ageratum I started from seed. I didn't get them divided out. You see how it's cramped. I just plopped the whole thing in the ground because it was just so late in the season and I just have neglected it. So many things going on. Look at this echinacea. Don't you love it? It's, it is in a pot so that it's protected from the gophers, but I'm loving how it's just coming together. Look at this. I don't know if it'll bloom. It looks like it might. That is a salvia that I started from seed and then I put out here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So this video is running much longer than 10 minutes, so I am way off in my timing, but everything is so pretty. Now these, this was a six pack of... Alyssum I bought at the garden center and I wanted to kind of edge with it. I was thinking next year, and I do um, grow a lot of alyssum from seed, that I want to grow enough to line my entire borders all the way around. I'll take give you a look around the secret cottage garden. And that's why I put it right there too. But I thought just a uniform border of alyssum would be so gorgeous and just unifying. So back up. Over there too, see the, even though they're dying away, those poppies are just so popular with the bumblebees. So let me turn this way. And you can see here, yes, I'm still working on the irrigation. That's that hose there. I'm trying to figure out how to, because that pipe is way up there. I think I'm gonna have it moved down lower where it's not so obtrusive. And then the hoses coming from it won't be quite so ugly. I don't know if I'm gonna move this hose link. I love this hose link. Um, what I like about it right here is I can pull it up through the Rose Alley or back across the Secret Cottage Garden to do any extra watering I may need. Um, I have the irrigation put in in both spots, so that's what I rely on mostly, and it's working great. But um, sometimes I do need to maybe spray off some spider mites or like I have to pull, come back here and over there and spray off some aphids, um, things like that. And it comes in handy or if I need to supplement once in a while. But let's back up, see what we can see as far as 
the garden and all that's going on. Those rocks are still sitting there. I wanted to put them in that heart shape in front of the uh, little tool shed and I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm so thrilled, so, so thrilled with how the secret cottage garden is coming along. Thank you for joining me on this tour and pretty soon I'll have the entrance or welcome garden tour to add uh, to the channel. It's so much has happened there. I moved some things. Things need to be deadheaded. There's spots that need some real work, but where it's at also is beautiful. I take it as it comes. Nothing is ever picture perfect in my garden. In fact, I saw uh, there's a new wave or a new trend and it's called chaos gardening. And I thought that's fits. I didn't know I was trend setting, but my gardens are always chaotic, but fun. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.